Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Namaste Experience here at Namaste Village. It is Friday, and I was just mentioning before I started the recording that we're going to begin moving in a, well, not a slightly different direction. I would say a completely different direction um, based on uh, something that has been reignited in me uh, even since yesterday's session. And when something is ignited within us, we follow the heat of that ignition. We follow that fire to see where it takes us. And so that's what I'm doing. And it's something actually that uh, is very similar to and started, oh, I would say a year and a half or so ago, when I began to have a very unusual experience that ultimately became uh, the book, The Master Teacher Within. And I would ask a question at that time, and then with my computer in front of me, I would somehow fall into some kind of a sleep, I guess. And when I would open my eyes again, the answer to that question would be written out uh, completely and beautifully and powerfully. And, and I followed that, I followed the heat of that particular fire and ended up being the book. But it started with um, my experience with s someone that many of you know or at least have heard of. Some of you have actually been with him, and that is this guy, Yay. known as the Master Teacher, or Chuck Anderson, okay. or whatever you want to call him. And I had the privilege of being able to live with him for a couple of years very early on in my own spiritual awakening and I would without question call him my personal instrument of awakening. Now for those of you who may have lived with him uh, it may have been a very life-changing experience as it was for me. I know for some of you here in the room it was and yet at the same time um, that particular teacher in that community with some people didn't have the best reputation. Because it, the, how do I say this, the, uh, the particular way of extending that uh, uncompromised teaching of truth was not particularly gentle. It, it could sometimes be like getting whacked upside the head with reality. But all I can say is that in that moment, that's what I needed. It worked for me and our modality here is very different and that obviously on some level works for you or you wouldn't be here uh, but now and then I will go back there's a website that's masterteacher.tv and you can listen to, to audio recordings from different sessions from way back or even videos and every once in a while I'll, I'll go and I'll I'll open up one and listen to it. And what I have found, especially yesterday, and this is how it all links together, uh, all I need to do is to listen to no more than five seconds. And it's like the whole universe suddenly opens up. I don't know if it's the result of my own particular uh, reference in time to that particular association uh, and the gift that I received from it or what it is or just a gift from out of time but I, I do know that for me it's a very real thing different than what I experienced before when when writing or you know channeling let's let's let's, let's um, go through that word for a moment Channeling so often is the idea that I have become this passive vehicle mm -hmm. and, and some wiser entity from another dimension or from out of time is going to use me as this poor mat, a passive vehicle to express some wisdom or divine experience that I could never possibly know. And, and I vehemently resist that description because it's disempowering. The truth is, the truth is, 
within you now. Did you hear that? The truth is, the truth is within you now. And yes, there may be catalysts that spark that awakening, spark that experience. But that doesn't mean that it, that it was never there in the first place. And that was definitely my experience with the master teacher within. It, it felt very much like the energy of the one that we call Dear One. Uh, in fact, I'm going to read just a tiny bit from, from that uh, a year and a half ago or so. And uh, it, it'll give you a flavor f a little bit for uh, his energy. And then we're going to go into something new. So this is from the, the, the book. You claim to be convinced of God's existence. If this is true, then there's only one course of action left in this world. Pursue God with all your heart, all your spirit, and all your strength. Anything less is hypocrisy. If you claim to be convinced of something so total, be totally devoted to that which you claim to be convinced of. That's a pretty powerful and direct statement. If you claim to be convinced of something so total, then be totally devoted to that which you claim to be convinced of. Words mean nothing to God. Words are invisible to God. Learn this and you will have learned a great secret of the universe. It's the call of the heart that God hears. It's the pounding of love's drum that God responds to. If you claim that God exists, but you do not give your whole heart to that existence, then you're a fool. A fool claims one thing and does another. All I'm telling you is that if you claim to believe in God so completely, then act like that. Act like this is so. Otherwise, I have no use for you. I love that. Anything that is so direct and uncompromising sings to my soul because each one of us knows that this is the, the uncompromised nature of, of divinity. There, there is no... There is no if and then and when it is right now. It's happening right now in and through you. And the instant you claim that in and through you, you will pop into an experience of wholeness, a vibrant experience of reality that this world knows nothing of. But you have to claim it. You can't just do it with your mouth or go around and talk about something. It is an internal claim that manifests in every direction. If you don't hear those, that on the, on the uh, Zoom room, those, the sound is all the rain birds. So we're hoping that it signifies that the rains are coming. All I know for sure is that in terms of this teaching, the rains have come. It's right now. So that being said, as I mentioned last night, I, I began to have an experience where I would listen just to literally five seconds of, of one of those teachings from those years at Endeavor Academy. And it instantly opened up. And one might say, you could say many things. You could say that, uh, that the master teacher was somehow joining with my intention and in moving through me. You could say it's in my imagination. You, what difference does it make? <laughs> right? Wow. What difference does it make? <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. The truth is true. Reality is forever real. And if, and if this truth is able to penetrate the armor that each one of us in our egoic state of reference claim and build and maintain and polish and shine, isn't, isn't that funny that that's exactly what we do? The ego is, is nothing more than like an, a medieval uh, set of armor that we polish and fix and make sure it's, there's no cracks. We don't want a single crack in that armor because the truth might get through and then you're in big trouble. So it's time to let the armor rust and fall apart effortlessly. 
So what I did, I, I, I just did this right before session, so I didn't get the chance to really make it look nice, but I, I want to share visually uh, those on Zoom, those of you here at Namaste might be able to, to read this, but if not, I would suggest just closing your eyes and just take this in. But this is, this is gonna be our first lesson. Okay, take a deep breath. And get ready to drop everything. Most cr Christians, most Christians are willing to accept the assertion that God has only one son or a single extension of wholeness that extends from God, but which never leaves its source. Most Christians are willing to accept that. Now, you call this extension Jesus or even the Christ, and you're perfectly willing to stop there. That's where you stop never considering the inevitability of a universal experience that lies beyond your perception. You're perfectly willing to accept the idea that Jesus is the Son of God. But what nearly every Christian refuses to accept is that the extension of God that never leaves its source, or in other words, the single, holy, perfect Son of God, is actually you. Hmm. Actually you. This is so unacceptable that the assertion of your own Christhood exists outside the realm of heresy. That's interesting. The Inquisition didn't even have a category for a declaration as radical as this one. There wasn't even a category. Why? Simply, and this is important, because the density of perceptual, illusory mind was so thick that there wasn't a sufficient number of awakened ones to communicate the inevitability of such an assertion. I'm going to read that one more time. The density of perceptual, illusory mind was so thick that there wasn't even a sufficient number of awakened ones to communicate the inevitability. It's inevitable. The inevitability of such an assertion that the holy, perfect child of God is you. So what changed? The sufficiency of grace has finally risen to a level that can finally be recognized. And you're able to recognize yourself as that you are finally able to recognize yourself as the holy, perfect child of God. The single extension of the love and the loveliness of God. The single extension. And I'm not talking about the you that you define, but the you that is defined by God. Even if you don't fully recognize it yet, at the very least, an opening has occurred in your mind that makes this realization inevitable. Wow, an opening has occurred in your mind that makes this realization inevitable. This is what Jesus meant when he said that this is a required course, and only the time that you choose to take it is voluntary. Remember, your full acceptance of your unified self is inevitable. It cannot be avoided. It may take what seems to be a very long time to realize this, but in the end, time isn't real, so it's happening right now. It's happening right now. And what's happening right now? That means you can accept it right now. It means that you can accept it right now. So what are you waiting for? Are you going to wait for another 300 or 3,000 years? Or are you willing to let every concept but this one dissolve in your mind? My suggestion is to stop waiting and accept your inevitable Christhood, your inevitable oneness with all that is, your experience of that, because it's already happening. 
It's as simple as snapping your fingers and waking up from the self-induced trance of separation. So, why not now? Why not right now? Let's just take a moment and breathe into that. The inevitable awakening that's happening right now and your experience is expanding into that realization of that which you are now and forever will remain. The holy, perfect child of God, complete and healed in whole, shining in the reflection of God's love right now. You may think that it's a long ways away, but it's happening right now. There's nothing you need to do. There's nothing you need to change. There's nothing you need to read or anything. It's happening right now. This is a required course. You don't need any more time. You've taken all the time you needed. You've wasted so much. So let's not waste another holy instant. Let's step in now. So. Once again, it makes no difference if this is something that erupted from my, my imagination or if dear one, Chuck, the master teacher, was speaking directly to me. What difference could that possibly make if you're not willing to receive this right now? If you're not willing to receive this right now, fine, come back in 300 years. That's perfectly fine since there is no time. And it's inevitable. You could do it for another 300, 3,000. doesn't matter. Or you could do it right now. So don't judge anything. Don't resist anything. Just allow yourself to flow into this experience right now. So Victoria. I'd love okay, to hear brother what you want to share. Good morning. I got morning. the fire. You feeling it? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I have, I have, I have, I have to start, start with Dear One. one. Because, because Dear One, one was such, such um, um, a unique, a unique experience, experience for most of us of a brother's mind who spoke beyond the veil. That's really it. He spoke from a dimension of realization even when he was hitting you upside the head, that was undeniable. So if any of you want to check out those videos, and it is true, five seconds, five seconds, and literally the veil would part. And the reason, and in those sessions, he talked quite a bit. Also, though, he just played music. Because when you're an experience of the truth, words get in the way no matter how powerful they are. Because it's a direct experience of being. Uh-oh, did I lose everybody? Am I here? Whoops. Am I here? Yeah, you're still here, Vic. Okay. And um, what I would say is one of the experiences that he often did and got criticized from, even from me at that time, he did not teach forgiveness of any kind. What he taught was drop it like a hot potato, which after all these years, I realized it is that simple. This is simple. If there's nothing else we want, if there's nothing else we're looping in our minds, someone we're mad at, something we're trying to get, if this is all we want, this will open up in us. It just has to. The reason it has to is because it is all there is. It is simple. The reason we can't find it is because it's so simple. The reason this is the age of that mother's love is because if we finally collapse our defenses enough to rest long enough, we will open up to a natural experience of what's all around us, but we were blind to. We were blind to because there was something else on our minds. It's that simple. Anything else on our minds blinds us. When we are willing to drop it, not process a lot of forgiveness work, not go through, 
And it may not be that those aren't helpful steps. They still may be very helpful steps. So everyone, the, the real call is to follow the guidance of the spirit in your own mind and heart. Always follow the guide, the guidance of the spirit. That is what heaven on earth is. Following the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Christ that we are, literally brings Christ and heaven on earth so that we see that there is nothing else because nothing else gets in the way of it because there's nothing else in the way of it in our own minds. That's why this is simple. What is on my mind, that's what is blocking heaven. It's what's blocking our acceptance. And you don't even accept your Christhood. You just acknowledge it as that's, oh my God, it's so simple. It's right here. That's all there is. It's right here. Nothing interferes with it. Nothing. Because there is nothing else. That's, that's how simple we can let it be if we are willing to drop our self-interest in everything. That's why it does come down to this very moment. Who knows what my self-interest is going to be from a month from now? All I need to be aware of is seek you first to the kingdom of heaven right now, right now, right now. In that prayer again, I choose to awaken now. What do I choose? I choose not to have anything else on my mind. Nothing. I'm here. I am one in life with God, with everything that has been created. It's impossible that we not all be part of it. In communion with everything. In that state, there's nothing to learn because there's natural knowing that comes from the inclusiveness of being all of it. That's why there's what they call the communion of saints. You're in communion with everything, not just the saints, with everything. Because everything is what we already are. And it's that source of everything that gives us our daily bread, gives us gives us friends and, and butter, bread and butter on the table, gives us everything while we seem to be here in time. But when our focus is without any distraction, here in time can be and already is, if we're willing to accept it, like you say, literally a state of heaven on earth in our oneness with our father. My father and I are one with our oneness. That's why there's nothing to do but enjoy it. Even when the upsets come, enjoy it because it's the, it's the passing of some temporary idea we had that we're letting go of. Thank you, Brother Jane, and thank you for doing this. I don't know how Dear One did it. It was his natural state. And I've listened to many, many of us have, you know, uh, Muji and all sorts of Eastern teachers. He had an ability to hit a frequency and it's a pitch and it didn't matter what his words were. It was a pitch that was not in time and space. And it was like a call, like that rain bird calling for the rain. It was a call to walk through to the other side. So I'm walking through to the other side. Yeah. All of mm. all. I love, I you, love all. you all. Thank, Thank you, you, Vicki. Oh. One other thing, I, thing I have to say. When you when said you that simplicity of grace, we have reached the tilting point. The tilting point where there is enough awareness that we can easily slip into our right mind, our Christ mind. That tilting point, we are it. We are experiencing it. Okay, thank you, James. I'm so glad you said that because I was leading right back into that myself. The one line that says exactly what you just said. The sufficiency of grace has finally risen to a level that can be finally recognized. You're able to recognize yourself as that as that which has always been. Call it the Christ, call it whatever you want to call it. But you are finally able to recognize yourself as that because that is all there is and the sufficiency of grace has risen. It's now, it's happening, you're ready. Even though it seems like things are going bonkers and maybe that's why there, there is that final assertion of illusion that, 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 that tries to maintain its tight hold. But it's inevitable, as we keep saying, it's happening right now through and as each one of us. So step in, the water's fine. 
<laughs> I'm going to turn to Calico for just a minute and see if Calico has, has a, a little uh, exclamation point that she can put at the end of this. Oh, I, you know, the is fabulous. In fact, I was sitting here listening to both of you going, you know, you know, when, when, you know, your, your mind is healing because you access one mind, which is, we're all thinking the same things, you know, and I didn't have the, the opportunity to meet um, the master teacher in the flesh, but I definitely watched many of his videos as I've done, you know, like Vicki was saying, God, I've watched every single guru and, you know, teacher and everything online. And they served me for when they served me. And now I just listen to guidance because that's all there is at some point is the guidance, which is what I get. You're hearing, James. And it's kind of like, once you hear the guidance, you can't hear anything but guidance. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's exciting. It's kind of like your, you know, your personal master teachers telling you every morning, okay, let's start the day this way and then go with it. Just go with it because fighting it is so not helpful because that's what I've done my whole life. I've fought everything. So now it's just kind of like going along with the one mind of love and, uh, you know, it's not, oh God, you know, I look back on this apparent life and it's kind of like the one mind of love was not something I was actively seeking. I was actively seeking to prove that Calico was worthy. And it's like, and once I gave that up, uh -uh, I, don't, I don't need to prove anything. And it's like, and then I started hearing guidance and, and I used words. It was personally my my way of using words but breaking them down you know and seeing what exactly am I saying and and also another key one is listen to what I'm saying because it's only for me <laughs> no one else needs to hear it but I do and it's like and once you start hearing what you're saying you start challenging those words going do I really mean that? Do I want to say that? I mean, it's just such an amazing process. And I feel like I, Vicki, I'm just now getting to that point of just drop it. You know, it's taken me a while. I am, a, you know, I wasn't an easy child. <laughs> and it's like, and now it seems like that's totally doable, but I had to go through all these steps. And I say, whatever step, go for it. You know, the channeling, oh, I'm so not, I'm so not into it. It's like, paying someone to listen to their ego yammer on. You know, I have one that I've listened to for my whole life. I don't need to pay you for yours. So, but at some point, if it's helpful, use it. But no, that's not the end. Keep going, keep getting deeper, deeper, deeper. And the master teacher is great. I mean, like, I, I really feel like I, I you know, because the master teacher was much like Teddy, okay? Teddy Poppy. And um, I really feel like I was born of that same genetic makeup. So on some level, <laughs> he's a part of me and I get it and I love him. And, and let's just keep going, you know, just pay attention in this moment of moment now. now. Best. Best. That's right. Oh, yes. You, you definitely would have done very well there, Calico. <laughs> oh, yes. So we're going to keep diving deeper and deeper with this. I'm just going to keep um, list, doing my five seconds and then letting it emerge, letting it show. And that's all we're, any of us are doing. As Calico said, this is just for me. And if you get something from it, bravo. But this is just to remind me that there's nothing else that I need. It's time to be awake. So... We're going to be going in a moment to, to Scott. Scott is going to take this uh, even a little bit deeper for anyone on Zoom who would like to stay on. But until then, we say together, Amen, 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 Punto. We love you. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.